Hello there everyone, today we're gonna tie this. This is a quite famous uh, Scandinavian pattern. I don't know if it originates in Norway or Sweden, but it has really, really been, uh, been a pattern that has been a lot of talk about uh, in these past uh, past years. It's fairly simple, but it really, really just works very general, very, very well in, in, in rough waters because it floats so well and it just basically looks like food. It's called Djuret. Um, in Swedish or dual in Danish or if you translate that it's going to be the animal so um, a, a highly efficient very very floating high floating fly and uh, not that difficult and well basically let's get started the the hook I'm going to use is a fairly large one because that's easier for you to see but this will work great in size 10 uh, size 10 16 20 right, 12 13 14 10, 12, 14, and 16 maybe. Uh, I'm using the Arex uh, curved dry fly. Uh, bartless of course, because all my trout flies for, for brown trout and grayling are, are tied on bartless hooks. And uh, this really has a nice uh, curve to it. Uh, also, it's 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 it is not as light as many uh, as as many very light uh, dry fly hooks, but but this can really really last and and is is very strong. So in strong currents and with with big fish, this hook will last as well. So I'm not saying that this is uh, very thick in the wire, but it is perhaps a bit thicker than than the very fine uh, uh, other dry fly hooks. So like so, then we need a, a piece, a, a small, small bundle of uh, of elk hair. And that's also one of the reasons I think this is so popular because it it combines a lot of ideas. Um, so it's it's it kind of have some of the the basic things that elk hair caddies have, and it it also have some of the uh, the the basic things from from the super pupae, the super pupae. Which is another great fly. So I take the the deer hair and then I brush it with my comb here to get all that uh, woolly stuff out. Um, and it's it's important to prepare your deer hair like this if you want it to be uh, to be easy to use. Then I take my CF design uh, uh, um, my CF design uh, hair stacker like so. It's the CF Design hair stacker has some rubber in the bottom, so it, it does not sound too loud when you're stacking your hairs. That's something I find, uh, and, and the people around you will find uh, attractive. So like this, so my hairs are now pretty much even, but I don't want too much for the tail here. That's gonna look too big then. So I'm gonna I'm gonna take out some of these hairs. So I have a fairly small bundle here, and then I'm going to tie this on top of the hook using a couple of loose turns before then I apply some major pressure. Like that. I'm going to hold everything down, and then I'm going to carefully turn all the hairs up keep them on the on the top side of the hook here and then move up along the hook shank up to the front because we're going to have this as part of the head and then I'm going to apply some more pressure to really tighten down and lock down my deer hair my elk hair like this then here in the front I'm going to cut this off. So that I kind of get a, a a bundle sticking out here in front that's going to be well, it's going to be the head. This is how the fly is designed. So we have the tail and the head part. And then I'm gonna take uh, my uh, my hackle, and for this I'm gonna use a whiting uh, a whiting uh, brown 
a dry fly saddle. This saddle is actually a saddle that has been with me for a very, very, very long time. I've had this for maybe 20 years or something like that. Now, I have picked out a feather, but I can't seem to find it now. Oh well. Um, yeah, here it is. Uh, this is only... Uh, I've been tying a few of these, so this is what is left over. And uh, what you want to do is you want to tie this with... Uh, as, as you look at this, there is a, a side that is up on the saddle, and then there is a side that is, that is down on the saddle, and you want to tie this so that the... Uh, so that the... Uh, the 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 side that is facing down down on the saddle is towards yourself because when you turn this hackle over then um, then you will get the fibers uh, standing uh, f standing forward uh, and and that will that will make your fly float better like this then I'm gonna take a small bundle of of olive uh, fly right light olive fly right. Of course, you can you can variate this in in color in in any color scheme that you like for for your particular waters. But uh, this is uh, this is a good combination. Um, this olive and uh, and and the brown. But you can do this in in any size. I I I'm pretty sure that this fly will be very successful for grailing. Also in uh, let's say in in completely black, a completely black variant. So basically I just form a body here with my dubbing, not a very thick one. Bit too much dubbing here in the front. This fly ride really is easy to work with and and just has high floatability and, and this, it's a cheap material. There's pretty much dubbing in the in the package. So uh, on all counts, fly ride is just really really a value for money for money project. Definitely uh, uh, dubbing definitely. I'm gonna take my hackle plier here. Then I'm gonna turn the feather. Distribute this as evenly, and you have to you have to turn this hackle fairly have fairly many turns of the hackle in order to give this fly um, as much hackle as possible to make this float even even better than it already does. Like that, then I'm gonna cut off the hackle. Like so. I'm gonna take my whip finish because this is gonna be a bit too difficult to make a whip finish here. And the head without getting any of the deer hair and the hackle stuck. If I just do a whip finish with my hands. Apply some pressure just pulling around the deer hair to make sure that it stays in place and well there you have it the animal or a duret really really an awesome awesome uh, imi not exactly an imitation but what this fly can is it really just it just looks like food and that is why the graylings and then the trouts will will grab it it can look like any kind of emerger or or any kind of you know basic insect insect that is just stuck in the surface so it's a really really good general pattern for for searching for fish and also even fishing um, fishing blindly because this basically it looks it has the it has the characteristics of uh, of something that is edible lying in the surface
this uh, for the trouts. So um, so a good dry fly pattern, fairly easy, not that many materials. Um, and uh, and as I said, it, it's not that important if you use a brown hackle or you use a, uh, a, a dun hackle or a dark dun hackle or something. It's just the composition and the way this is built. It's main, meant to, to you know be able to to be fishable all throughout the day uh, because of the materials here that has so many um, so so great uh, floatability and um, and uh, and the materials and the composition simply ensures that you have a fly look that looks well that really just looks like food and can catch a lot of fish uh, throughout the day so thank you for for watching um, uh, remember to subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already and, and visit my uh, shop uh, uh, for, for, for a complete material kit for, for this exact fly. Thank you so much for watching. Uh, good luck on the waters.